93 boxing back with another video let's talk about sean Porter and adrian Gonados. again by the way um i am ill still i feel out of breath i think my nose is blocked and shit but i'll be breathing a bit hard so do ignore that but i want to give my opinion on sean Porter and adrian Gonados fight it's a bit of a late review of the post fight thought um Porter, in a way, I was impressed with him. In a way, I wasn't because, you know, normally I know Adrian Granados is a guy that's not known to be a lead fighter. So, a lot of people probably thought Sean Porter's just going to walk right through him. But I see Adrian Granados as an underrated fighter. And uh, Sean Porter struggled with him. And, you know, I'm not surprised by it. I'm just impressed by Granados. Granados, rather. Porter apparently uh, hurt his hand and kind of like Adrian Brother hurt his hand, right, against Granados. And that makes me, you know, it, this was a competitive fight. I think more, com you know, this was more convincing that Sean Porter won, in many people's opinion, than the Broner Granados fight was that Broner won. But overall, you still get the impression that Broner's still on that level. And it's just that he doesn't throw his hands enough. And which is why I'm kind of pissed. That's the first thing that came to my mind when I was watching the fight. I was like, man, Adrian Broner, if he threw his hands enough, he, he, he he's a really good fighter. But, you know, aside from Adrian Broner, <clears throat> Adrian Granados did really well. He has to work on his balance. Sean Porter, I think he improved his jab. He is, uh, I think, defensively more responsible. You know, I think... He, he's still kind of reckless in a way, but he's a little bit smarter with it. He has head movement going in, and when he's in the pocket, he has great head movement compared to before. Um, he was doing well. I think he was doing really well, keeping Adrian Granados off balanced. But you know what? I, I see the improvements. Could he beat Keith Thurman? Um... I like Sean Porter's jab, man. I think he's improved a lot. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if he can beat Keith Thurman. I would say no. I would say he can't beat Keith Thurman yet. It'd be a competitive fight with Thurman, but Thurman show some improvement as well. And to be honest, he's ducking Errol Spence straight up in there. <clears throat> he's ducking Errol Spence. He's making some bullshit excuse on why he doesn't want to fight Errol Spence. And before the fight, it was Kenny Porter that was making up all this shit. Like, as if he's the fighter. You know, I've been saying this. Sean Porter's ducking Ed, um, Errol Spence. You know, Danny Garcia wasn't one, the only one. Keith Thurman wasn't the only one. You know, I guess... Errol Spence is a... He has reward. When you beat him, there's reward. But there's also a bigger risk. The risk to reward is not as good. <clears throat> now... The only person that I see Errol Spence get beat by, if if he does get beat by, is honestly, stylistically, a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but stylistically, it's probably Danny Garcia. And I know he's avoiding Errol Spence right now. That's what he does. He takes a few hard fights and he cherry picks. But he still ends up with one of the best resumes in boxing. I actually think Danny Garcia beats Sean Porter. I mean, even though he's kind of improved, refined a bit with his jab, he's quick as well. He's still kind of reckless. He can get caught with counter punches. Sean Porter has improved himself being a counter puncher himself. <coughs> Excuse me. But. Man he's still coming in like that. Danny Garcia will catch him. Danny Garcia will catch him. Um, Yeah man. They're all ducking Errol Spence. I mean everyone's ducking Errol Spence man. I guess Lamont Peterson got balls. I mean, actually, no, he doesn't, but he's got that injected testosterone. That's like a third testicle. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <clears throat> Fuck, man, I feel ill, but... Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Box has been good this year, really good. Um, I can't wait for the World Weight Division to kick it in. I want Errol Spence to fight someone else after Lamont Peterson. It'd be a good fight itself. But here's the thing, right? Everyone is looking for a way to duck Errol Spence. At least avoid him for, temporarily. Keith Thurman don't want to fight Errol Spence. He's pulling off the Anthony Joshua trick in a way, in my opinion. He wants to delay it so he can 
try and improve. Although Errol Spence is younger than Keith Thurman, so <clears throat> and also Sean Poole is avoiding him. Um, Errol Spence is really big, and look what Errol Spence did to Kell Brook. Sean Poole, I don't think we'll be able to do that. And also, Danny Goss is avoiding him because I told you he he's on that cherry pick. Should the cherry pick actually? Helps Danny Garcia, if you think about it. Not only is he giving his body a rest, and I mentioned this before, you can't just be going hard all the time against top fighters. No one does that, unless it's like Floyd Mayweather Jr. <clears throat> if you look at... um, Sorry, what's it called? Danny Garcia, he's, going, he, he's been doing this for Rod Salka, for Marisa Herrera, then he fought Lamont Peterson, who's a good fighter, in my opinion. He's a good fighter. And uh, <clears throat> he's gonna avoid Errol Spence for a bit. When he he fight, when he cherry picks, right? People hate on Danny Garcia. It, you know, it's in, it gets an interest going. You know, people start hating, and they start paying more attention. When you know, you can have a normal fighter, right? Like just a normal guy. I don't know, like <clears throat> Sot Takara, so. Some guy that does, I mean, not even Sota Karas, some guy that might be better than Sota Karas, like a world level fighter, a better than a world level fighter, but doesn't really have anything that attracts him, like in terms of getting attention. So, <clears throat> Danny Garcia, by cherry picking, he actually gets a lot of attention, a lot of hate. People talk about it, people get furiated, and even they talk about this with other boxing fans, like. Yo, you know what? This guy, he's a boxer. He's he's cherry picking. You know, this he's he's supposed to be this top guy, but he's cherry picking. He's fighting this guy. Can you believe this? And you know, even to people who doesn't know boxing, that will get them interested as well. So, Danny Garcia, he's smart. Um, he will fight Errol Spence. I mean, very late. You know, a few years later, if Errol Spence keeps winning, Danny Garcia gets some good wins. Keith Thurman, again, as I mentioned, I I, I feel like I know what he's going to do. Um, Kell Brook, hey, he didn't want to fight no Errol Spence. Let's be real. Let's be real. He only fought Errol Spence because to try keep his title, because the title keeps him relevant. Kell Brook has gone from being a world champion to being irrelevant straight, and <clears throat> the only way he's trying to be relevant is calling out another fighter who's not relevant for a, a year at least in a Mekong. Like Mekong will be relevant when he fights, and if he fights again. But all Kell Brook's gonna do is call out a fighter that's not relevant anymore for now, and that's Amir Khan. So Kell Brook's kind of he didn't want to fight Noel Spence. <clears throat> you look at who else, and you know Amir Khan himself, right? He don't want to fight Noel Spence either. None of I mean I'm fairly sure they all want to fight Errol Spence and challenge themselves, but Errol Spence is a higher risk. Reward is not low. But risk is so high that it's like, do you need to fight this guy? Amerikan, you know, him teaming me up with Spence in the way that Amerikan allowed Spence to use his gym is not only a move to get revenge on Brooke, but it's a smart move on his behalf. It's also like, you know, you kind of, it's an attempt to make friends with Errol Spence. And when you're friends, you're less likely to fight each other, right? So I personally think that's the case. Um, let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment down below. Subscribe to my channel, 93boxing. I'm out. 93boxing, back with another video. Let's talk about Sean Porter and Adrian Granados. Again, by the way, um, I am ill. Still, I feel out of breath. I think my nose is blocked and shit, but I'll be breathing a bit hard. So do ignore that, but I want to give my opinion on Sean Porter and Adrian Granados' fight. It's a bit of a late review of the post fight thought. Um, Porter, in a way, I was impressed with him. In a way, I wasn't because, you know, normally I know Adrian Granados is a guy that's not known to be a lead fighter. So a lot of people probably thought Sean Porter's just going to walk right through him. But 